सर गुड मॉर्निंग टुडे विल बी कंप्लीटिंग आवर डिस्कशन ऑन पॉइंट्स एंड क्रॉसिंग्स एंड इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैड सीन द कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ अ क्रॉसिंग सो इन दैट मेनली वी हैड सीन दैट देयर इज अ क्रॉसिंग और अ वी पीस व्हिच इज द व्हिच इज मेड अप ऑफ आइदर टू पॉइंट रेल और टू स्प्लाइस रेल्स सो द सेम वी हैड सीन हियर इन केस ऑफ स्प्लाइस रेल इट इज cut in such a way that it fits the shape of the point rail and forms a v junction or v shape and in case of point rail both the rails are identical uh, you can say a mirror image of each other and then they are joined together and other than that uh, nowadays i told you that there is a new type of mechanism or a new type of component in which it is casted monolithically in the workshop the wing rail as well as the crossing okay. so this is that component on the left side then we had seen the theoretical nose of crossing and actual nose of crossing so in theoretical nose of crossing it is the actual location at which the uh, v portion of your crossing should have ended but in order to avoid the direct impact of that vertical nose portion on the wheels we trim it in such a way and this is something what is seen in the side so this becomes your theoretical nose of crossing also known as tnc and this becomes your actual nose of crossing that is anc so same is shown in this figure uh, in the form of a plan and a sectional drawing so the point number 1 it is the tnc and you can see its elevation you can, or height if you see of that rail section so it is at a lower level as compared to this point number 3 which is the anc or actual nose of crossing so there is this slant portion or a trimmed portion okay. so this is the tnc and anc then we saw the wing rails these are the components which are on both the sides of the v shape crossing or the crossing nose okay? and those are provided to maintain the gap or facilitate the gap between the or gap in the crossing so that the flange crosses properly and then we had check rails and we had seen that check rails are nothing but from the name itself it derives its function that it keeps in check the flange of the wheel so that it doesn't derail or leave the Uh, rail which it which it is supposed to traverse okay so this is provided at the crossings the main section of the crossing or the v portion and also it is provided at sharp curve so that there is no derailment so in case of sharp curve we have seen the image in the discussion of points and switches so there well when discussing the distance blocks we have seen that there are check rails provided on the curves so in short mainly the crossing or crossing part of a turnout it com contains this four main components that you can see in this figure that you have a actual v piece made up of point rail and splice rail or two points rail then you have wing rails two wing rails and this wing rails and this v component or wing rail point rail and splice rail all together they provide the gap for that flange of the wheel to cross and then you have a check rail and then other components are just accessories such as the uh, slide chairs and the packings below the chairs so that i have not included in this theory part so this is only the crossing section as far as it is considered so like we had a toe and heel for the point section or point or uh, switches so in similar way we have a toe and heel for a crossing as well so now if you see this facing direction so here somewhere you have the suppose points or uh, switches so here you have points and then you are traveling in the facing direction so wherever or where the wing rail starts that is nothing but the toe of crossing and then as you move towards the facing direction or as you move in the facing direction then you have a wing rail 
pair of wing rail left hand wing rail and right hand wing rail okay so these are the wing rails then at the location where you have the minimum distance between the wing rails so it is sort of a triangular shape on both the sides so in between wherever you have the minimum gap between two wing rails that is nothing but the throat of a crossing the technical term for it is throat of a crossing and from that throat till the a and c or actual nose of crossing whatever is the distance that is the gap in the crossing or gap between the throat and crossing nose and then we know this a and c and t and c then you actually have this crossing or the v component okay? and at the end of the wing rails you have this flaring which is done that is just acts as a opening and exit for your fl uh, flange of the wheel it is, and the gap is known as the flange way. so this is the flange way and the angle which is formed by this v portion okay, the angle on this right hand side so this angle is nothing but the crossing angle and this is the splice rail and point rail in this case and then where the v component ends that is the heel of the crossing okay so and from the toe of the crossing to the heel of crossing the length it is considered as considered as the length of crossing okay? and you all know the trailing direction which is in the opposite to the facing direction so this is the these are all the components of your crossing in one picture and we have seen all of them in detail in the previous lecture and again coming back to from where we started so we started with this diagram that we had considered a left hand out and then we had separately that uh, this is the points or a switch portion and then this was the crossing portion okay and we have seen all the detail components that what goes into the switch or also known as points so in this we have seen uh, firstly the facing direction trailing direction definitions then we had seen the tongue rail okay. what is a tongue rail it is a tapered rail which is movable and it is movable with the help of this stretcher bar then moves that is known as the throw of the switch and the start point is known as toe of a switch then you have stock rails or the main rails to which your tongue rails are attached now in this case it's a left hand turnout so one of the stock rail is straight and the another stock rail it goes or it takes the diversion and then you have this branch which is coming out from your straight track okay now as you can see there is some black colored portion uh, as the stock rail and tongue rail and bend in check rail so as i told you there are uh, or if when you see in or uh, you see it as a total turnout so you don't see different the rails which are joined together but it's one section it's a looks like an homogeneous but only thing is they have or they have been made made so that you can define the length of the various parts of the turnout so tongue rail it is a different component and it is joined to this lead rail now here lead rail you might think it is a new term but it's nothing but the uh, rails which are continuing from the tongue rail and the stock rail itself okay? and they are leading towards the crossing or leading towards the uh, straight track and branch track so that's why they are called as lead rails it's nothing different kind of rail it's the same rail which continues from this tongue rail and stock rail itself okay? at this junction of this you have a joint because your tongue rail was a tapered rail at the start and then it took the shape or uh, full size of the rail so here you have a joint and then again you have a wing rail now as i told you many of our times now or nowadays uh, this section of this wing rail and crossing it is casted 
in workshop so almost this portion it is homogeneous and then again wherever you need to place a joint you place a joint in form of a fish plate or a welded joint whichever is suitable and then check rails are provided so that near the crossing the derailment does so now we are in a position to understand what is a turnout okay and what are its component what is switch or what is point what is a crossing what are components of those and just to end up this uh, section now we have different types of crossing as we have seen different types of switches in which we had seen the stub switch the split switch and then other various categories so in similar way we have different types of crossing as well so mainly the classification it is based on two parameters one is based on the shape of the crossing okay or you can also say the angle of crossing we will be looking into that and the second parameter on which the classification is depending it is the assembly of the crossing so we'll be seek uh, all those one by one so starting with the acute angle crossing now from the name if you see it has something to do with the angle of crossing so we have seen what is an angle of crossing so this is the crossing angle or angle of crossing okay, the v portion whatever is made by the point rail and splice rail or two point rail so the angle is nothing but crossing angle or angle of crossing so depending on that angle of crossing you have the uh, classification based on shape so first one is the acute angle crossing so here you can see this angle which is made it is acute angle or very small angle so it is termed as a acute angle crossing rest all the things remain same okay, you can see the rails over here then these are the wing rails this is the v portion okay. so everything else remains the same there is no different component as such for different types of crossing the only thing changes in this uh, classification based on shape is the for angle okay. so you have an acute angle crossing and you have an obtuse angle crossing now here you can see now this is not actually an obtuse angle but it is uh, considerably greater than the va value that can be there for this acute angle crossing so uh, don't think that it is obtuse angle crossing so it should be greater than 180 degree it's uh, nothing like that or up to 180 degree also it is not it's just uh, nearer to 90 or slightly greater than 90 also you can't even say that it is always greater than 90 okay so here if you see it can be al also less than 90 but it is considerably a large value than your acute angle so that's why it is termed as obtuse angle crossing so do not confuse this with with the actual obtuse angle that you studied that it should be greater than uh, 90 degree or uh, almost 180 degree or so it's nothing like that okay so this is the optical obtuse angle crossing that you can see and then the third one obviously the square crossing which is nothing but when the angle of crossing it is exactly equal to 90 degree so in that case it is called as a square crossing or this is this type of crossing is also known as a diamond crossing so this picture that you can see on the right hand side this is the famous crossing which is there in indian railways it is there in nagpur so it is said that it's the only uh, kind of a square crossing in indian railway network that you can see so this is the type or these are the types of crossing based on the shapes acute obtuse and square then you have types of crossing based on the assembly of crossing now assembly of crossing we all know the four main components of the crossing the v piece
was movable on uh, both the sides left or right so in similar way or in that similar uh, movement uh, fashion you have this spring crossing or movable wheel crossing in which this wing rails are movable but no uh, both the wing rails are not movable only one of the wing rail is movable. now in this figure what you see so this wing rail which i have tick marked this is the movable one and here you can see there is a assembly okay. though it's not clear but this is the assembly which makes the movement of this wing rail possible so whenever needed it is moved to left or right depending on the purpose on which track you have to uh, maintain the gap or uh, do want to maintain the gap so the line diagram for the same it is shown on the bottom left corner okay. so that's the only uh, difference that you have it may be a acute angle crossing or obtuse angle crossing but the main function it is derived from the movement of the wing rail so the same i have just written in this uh, theory slide okay. so the wing rail is movable one of the wing rails okay. now both wing rails are not movable like your tongue rail and then why you need this is to make the track sort of continuous okay. so in case of high speed tracks uh, this is desirable that in high speed tracks if the gaps are less then you are able to achieve more speed because the track becomes a continuous one so for that purpose you have this spring and spring or movable wheel crossing but in india it is not used it is generally used in usa india it is not much favored because uh, all or this whole system or this whole assembly will work only if this spring okay you uh, i told you that this is a uh, assembly which is used to move the wing rail so it's generally a very high strength helical spring is there in this assembly and some other components so this helical spring is responsible for the movement so here also you can see so all the functioning or movement it will depend on whether your spring is in good condition or not so in case if suppose it's not in good condition or it stops working abruptly so in that case it can lead to disaster accidents so that's why in india it is not much preferred it is only used in us but it's a type uh, which is there in the field so that's why it is covered here and then you have a second type in this assembly parameter that is a ramped crossing now ramped crossing you can see it's only a uh, theory i've written the purpose is that these types of crossings they are not generally used or not uh, preferred they are only used if uh, required in the station yard so in station yard where you have a lot of traffic but it's a slow moving traffic so in that case the main thing to understand is the what is there in this ramp crossing is the throat to nose clearance is negotiated by a steel block that is whatever distance we see that the throat to nose whatever is this gap so in a normal crossing, uh, crossing this gap is open one okay so you have gap uh, this whatever is gap is there it is not filled with some material or anything but in case of ramp crossing here you have a manganese block okay which is a high strength uh, material okay and only a minimum gap which is required for the flange to move that which is left and this rest of the gap between the throat and the anc is filled with or it is covered with the manganese block so that's why it's called a ramped crossing 